Army headquarters on the Anzio beachhead below Rome. What once was an Italian wine cellar becomes a bomb-proof command post. Here is the nerve center of one American unit in the embattled sector. By telephone and telegraph, Signal Corps men keep the force in touch with the main body to the south. The American soldier is able to make himself at home under any conditions. Always in evidence are reminders of the girls he left behind. At a clearing station behind the main front, ambulances transfer the wounded to hospital trains. Nurses of the Army Medical Corps traveling right with the men to provide every possible comfort during the first stage of the long journey home. At base hospitals, they receive attention impossible under conditions at the front. Here they rest and are prepared for the voyage back to America. Veterans of the Italian campaign, they've given their best to the cause of the United Nations. At Sao Paulo, Brazil, men of the first Brazilian expeditionary force to go overseas receive battle flags made by the women of the city. Before the war minister and his staff, the division passes in review. The Brazilian Women's Legion takes part in the national salute. Fresh contingents from the New World go to join their brothers-in-arms on the fighting front. The Army's famous jeep is joined by a new and larger scout car, a speedy troop carrier capable of transporting ten men in a hurry. Designed principally for shore patrol, the new vehicle is a super jeep. Here, the smaller car attacks a sand dune and gets bogged down. Along comes its big brother, loaded to capacity. More powerful, it passes the smaller jeep. Rough riding, but it proves it can master any terrain. An effective carrier for allied forces fighting around the world. The Army honors the families of American soldiers of Japanese ancestry. Their sons died as heroes on the battlefields of Italy. Sixty from Hawaii alone gave their lives for their adopted land. To the bereaved parents, America awards medals of the Purple Heart. Despite their sorrow, they are proud of their contribution to the cause of freedom. Twelve hundred feet below the surface in the Malagash salt mines of Nova Scotia, Canadian miners work on great underground cliffs and mountains to extract the common mineral which plays so important a role in production for war. Largest mineral salt mine in North America, the Malagash deposit is 27 million years old. Dry salt is mined by biting slabs from the wall hauling it through tunnels by ingenious machinery. Some salt is mined by spraying water on the walls. Every gallon of water carries two and a half pounds of salt to the lake 800 feet below. Rock salt crystals that nature took three years to form. Here, the salt is bagged for war. This is one place where the workman who brings his lunch doesn't bother with a salt shaker. There's plenty right on the ground.
healthy, robust Australian girls replace men as lifeguards on a beach in New South Wales. They launch a heavy surfboat and they handle it with rare skill. Called down to get a lifeline into the water, the girls demonstrate the latest technique, teamwork. Australian women proving they're fit to carry on in any job until their boys win the war. Japan's Marshall Islands, 2,420 miles from Hawaii, have fallen. Now 1,240 miles further west, Crook, Japan's Pearl Harbor of the Central Pacific is the target of a powerful American naval force. These are waters long considered impregnable by the Japanese. Enemy planes come up in a desperate effort to protect their vital base. The gunners throw up a curtain of flak and enemy warplanes are shot flaming into the sea. American carrier-based planes go aloft to destroy valuable shipping known to be harbored in Truk's broad lagoons. Japanese vessels circle desperately to escape. Twenty-three Jap ships are sent to the bottom. Striking again and again, American forces hammer a Truk 22 times within five days. Truk, as a base for the elusive Japanese fleet, is being made untenable. Sweeping northward on Saipan Air Base, 600 miles nearer Tokyo, Americans dive bomb the airstrip. These are some of the 135 enemy planes that never left the ground. installations are fired as United States forces leave the base in ruins. Returning virtually unchallenged after a week in enemy waters, the carrier's warbirds swoop back to their nest. Damaged dive bomber comes in on one wheel, but the pilot saves his plane, although he himself is hurt. A dramatic chapter of new American victories in the Pacific. Yeah.